Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are going to be checking out pattern two of the minor pentatonic scale. Now, all of you guys doing my Blues Lee guitar course, I hope are very familiar with pattern one and you've got some licks out of it, but this pattern two, this might be a completely new scale shape for you. And really, really important when you're learning a new scale is that you take it really slowly and get it absolutely accurate, right? The right fingers in the right frets. You've got to avoid the temptation of rushing in there. It's very important. If you, if you learn it wrong, it's like kind of writing bad code. It takes a little while to find the code and then you've got to spend ages kind of overwriting it to get it correct. So when you come to learn the scale for the first time, really do it slowly. I'm going to be running that through with you uh, in this lesson. But before we start getting into that, I want to explain how we get to pattern two and why it exists and what the point is. Now I'm going to do that in a close up, but try and just hold fire on practicing the scale until I start doing it as a, a nice slow run through and explain to you how you should practice it. So uh, let's get to a close up. So very quick little bit of revision first of all for you. So pattern one of the minor pentatonic. Fifth fret, eighth fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, fifth fret, eighth fret, fifth fret, eighth fret. And exactly the same on the way down. So what we do when we're learning pattern two now is we're going to actually keep all of these notes that were played with the third and fourth fingers. We're going to move all of the notes that were at the fifth fret, or most of them, up onto the next string. So what I mean by that is let's take these first two notes of the minor pentatonic, which is the note C and the note A. Now this A, we're going to move it onto the next string. It's found there on the tenth fret of the second string. So instead of going we can go the third note of the scale, it's here the eighth fret of the second string, next note of the scale was here the note E which is uh, in the fifth fret, but we can also play it here at the ninth fret of the third string. Okay, and so on down the scale. So you can actually hear this. Exactly the same as this. So you might be wondering why we bother to learn a second pattern anyway if the notes are the same. Well, they're not quite the same in pattern two because uh, here we had the top note was the note C, but when we move to pattern two, we get this note D falls nicely under the fingers. And this is a great note in the blues, lots of fantastic licks because it's a good one to bend. Great for doing these little blues curls here on the on the eighth fret with the first finger. It just it fits comfortably under the fingers, and that's one of the things that you'll find in, in certain patterns. Certain licks seem to fit nicer than in other places. So uh, a lick that might feel comfortable here would be next to impossible here, you'd have to go, which would just, it's just all kinds of awkward, right? So that's the reason is that the different patterns lend themselves to different licks. And as well, you get a slightly different sound. So this A sounds ever so slightly different to this A. And being on the second string, it's a bit easier to get a vibrato. You've got a bit more space there on the, on the second string. Okay, here you can, you can only push up and it's just a little bit more awkward. So there are a few guys actually that only put, uh, tend to put vibrato on uh, strings other than the first string. But they're the two main reasons. It's about where it feels under the fingers and for a slightly different sound. So let's have a go at actually playing this through now really nice and slowly and making sure that you get it 100% correct. So we're going to start here on the lowest root note which is actually on the fourth string. And this is kind of a big deal. I've mentioned before the starting and ending on the lowest root note. And particularly when you start learning further up the neck, it's really important that you know where the root note is because that's how you can calculate the correct scale. So this is an A minor pentatonic because this note is the note A. 
Okay, really, really, really important that you remember that. And it also helps with the tonality of hearing the sound of the A minor if you're starting and finishing on the A. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to play it once kind of quick and then I'll take it through nice and slowly for you. We'd start on the lowest root note. We play up the scale. Back down the scale. As low as we can go in position. And then we come back and we finish on that root note. So let me take it through nice and slowly for you and explain the fingering as we go. So first finger, seventh fret on the fourth string. Little finger on the tenth fret of the fourth string. First finger, seventh fret, third string. Third finger, ninth fret, third string. We're going to talk about that note again in a second and the fingering for it. First finger, 8th fret on the 2nd string, 3rd finger, 10th fret, 2nd string, 1st finger on the 8th fret, thinner string, then 3rd finger, 10th fret. We go back to the 8th fret now, still on the thinner string, then the 10th fret on the 2nd string with the 3rd finger, on the 8th fret with the 1st finger, moving over onto the 3rd string with the 3rd finger kind of crossing over there into the 9th fret, first finger on the 7th fret, moving over to the 4th string, little finger on the 10th fret, first finger on the 7th fret, then onto the 5th string, little finger on the 10th fret, first finger on the 7th fret, little finger on the 10th fret of the thicker string, second finger in the 8th fret, still on the thicker string, back to the little finger on the 10th fret, back to the 5th string now, first finger in the 7th fret, little finger in the 10th fret and finishing on that root note. Okay, so a little bit faster now. Definitely while you're learning a new scale I recommend using all down picks and don't worry about any of the any of the picking pattern stuff. Once you feel like you've got it nice and consistent you probably want to use alternate picking starting with a down pick. So just down, up, 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 down, up. So I want to do a quick bit of myth busting here because there's a couple of things that are really, really commonly misunderstood here. Uh, the first one, this fingering, absolutely ridiculous. So I, I've seen it in loads of method books over the years where, and, and I kind of get what they're saying because you can keep your hand in the one position, but you f they're forgetting that the point of the scale is to make music out of it. And actually here in this scale, the main deal in a blues is going to be string bending. Now you want to have your third finger there for that bend. You want to have your first finger for doing the little curl. Doing it here with the little finger is just difficult, right? They're the weakest fingers. They're, they've got no point in doing that string bending like that. It's absolutely crazy. And actually another note that we want to access probably here is the blue note. We're going to come on to that a little later. So if you're here, you can get that little finger action and going in there as well. So that's another reason why you want to be using fingers one and three here. Vibrato there with the third finger. You don't want to be... So, you know, you can kind of do it, but... And there may well be an instant where you use the second finger there if you're going... A lick like that, maybe you would use second finger there, but if you're playing the scale, I massively recommend you use first, third, first, third. Okay, I think that's a really, really important part of this. Now, but you just see there, something happened. Yeah, second finger's there. Now, it depends on the lick that you're playing, so there are definitely going to be times where you're going to use your second finger there. 
it's, it's going to be very, very common to do that. Okay, so don't be fast. If suddenly you find yourself using the second finger there, it's totally cool. Just when you're practicing the scale up and down, I recommend using one and three there. If you really want, you could use first and second. There are some kind of advantages in that your hand's not kind of crossing over and getting a bit cramped at that point, but it doesn't really tend to happen in real life for me that the hand gets cramped there using the third finger. And, and so long as you're aware that either the second finger or the third finger is going to play that note, because I sure can't hear a difference if I play it with different fingers. So while I think it's really important to have a set fingering that you learn and that you use and that there are fingerings that are logically wrong, you also need to be hip with the idea that there's going to be times when you use a fingering that might not be the fingering that you first learned the scale with. And that's totally fine. I'm sure that there's going to be a reason, you know, somebody's going to tell me a, a reason why using that particular fingering is going to be a good fingering. And, and maybe there is, but I'm just suggesting that most of the time using fingers one and three on those thinnest two and either using fingers two or three on that note is going to be the most common fingering you're going to find useful. So the first thing you should be aiming to do is to play the scale up and down with no funny pauses where you forget what's going on, right? So a nice consistent tempo. And as soon as you can do that, I'd recommend putting it to a metronome. Uh, playing with a metronome is really good for developing your time feel and as well for helping you develop your technique because once you've got it consistently at 60 beats a minute and you can play just one note per click, move it up to 65 and then play it at 65 and then 70 and then 75, and that, you know, and gradually it'll develop your technique and your speed. And one of the big deals with practicing scales as well. It's funny enough, it's not really about the speed, it's a de developing the synchronization between your two hands. Okay, and that's, that's pretty important. So as you start to play faster, you might not want to play fast, but in the process you're going to be developing the synchronization. And the synchronization has a big impact on tone as well. It's kind of a big deal. So practicing the scales with a metronome is a really good idea. The second thing I definitely recommend you doing is having a go over the backing track at using these notes before you've learned any licks from this scale, because the very next lesson is going to be about you know using some licks from this very pattern, you know, because I, I think that's the cornerstone really of learning blues is developing a good vocabulary. But it's also something to be learned about just having a bit of a muck around and seeing kind of what you find, because you might find some words. It's, you know, again, if you're listening to blues a lot, which you should be, then you're likely to find some of those little words, especially if you've taken on board the stuff that we've talked about before. You know, you're going to find these little kind of quirks within the scale, within the pattern, that kind of fit nicely under your fingers. Um, one thing I am going to point out that I think is a really big deal, and I see it happen all the time, is uh, people string bending uh, the tenth fret on the second string. Okay, that's not a good note for string bending. Okay, so um, the thinnest string, great note for string bending. You can bend a tone or a semitone. Putting the curl with your first finger on the eighth fret is great, but this last note here on the tenth fret on the second string. This is the root note, and it doesn't really sound good if you bend it. You kind of can later on if you, if you know exactly what you're doing and you do it confidently, you can bend it a tone or a minor third, but I would recommend at this point that you just don't bend that note, because if you bend it a little bit flat, it sounds really horrible. It's one of those real kind of beginner corkers where, you know, if somebody's listening, you'd be like, oh, really? Did you really want to play that one? You know, it's, it's, it's a bit rough. So. In this particular pattern, I would recommend restricting your bending onto the thinnest string, okay? The second string, not so much. Third string, again, you have to be very, very careful with, okay? There's lots of cool tricks that we're going to check out when we learn the licks for this particular pattern, but really with your, with your string bending, I'd recommend that you stick just on the thinnest string for now, and then as you progress as a guitar player and you understand more about what you're doing when you're string bending and the, you know using fancier notes and stuff, then you revisit it and explore it in a, in a new context. So please don't forget to practice this scale really slowly, really carefully, get it right, stick it to a metronome, have a go at improvising, and I'll see you for the next lesson where we're going to be learning five really cool licks that use this very pattern. So I'll see you for that very soon. Take care.